G'day. I see this lovely red ale. I haven't got a red ale on tap. Well, I didn't <laughs> until about 10 minutes ago. This is a combination of my American Stout and one of my house sales. Now, I'm gonna go into the little bit of the story of why I actually did it to this beer, uh, to this house ale. So we'll have a quick look at that. G'day. I was going to do, as mentioned in another video, a solo video just about these two beers. Now this was a, a fairly regular house ale, virtually single malt, and a little bit of galaxy leaf thrown in right at the end. It was five or 10 minutes from the end. I'll leave a link for the recipe if you want to link, want to look. But uh, it was a very basic, basic recipe for the wife and for visitors. Now visitors weren't allowed to have any more. <laughs> and the wife's on a diet and given up drinking. So I'd already fermented one, which was this one. I'd rushed it through. It was about six days in the fermenter. Um, it's only about four and a half percent and it was two packs of USO5, but I did really rush it. And it did have a little bit of a yeasty aroma when kegged. That has since sort of uh, dissipated. That's nowhere near as bad anymore. But since both kegs were for me, since it was a double batch and the wife wasn't drinking it anymore, I decided to change this one up a bit. Now, my plan was to turn it, you know, into a very hazy sort of light pale ale. So I dry hopped 50 grams of Falconer's Flight day, well, 24 hours in. And then I dry hopped again about day five or six and then let it ferment out. It fermented out in about eight days. And I expected it to be extremely hazy. Well, there's not much difference. This wasn't dry hopped at all. This one had 100 grams, as I said, 50 grams, 24 hours. And I, I just don't understand. And a second dry hop near the end. Usually you get a hazy beer doing that. The only thing I can think that's different to my usual hazy beers is I dumped this one straight on top of the yeast cake of this. So there was a lot of yeast in there. Maybe that's something to do with it. Uh, but you would have thought you would have got some, like it's pretty clear, you would have thought you would have got some form of um, biotransformation from the hops, but it's, they're nearly identical. <sighs> Not in taste. <laughs> this one tastes heaps better. Still, for some reason, the aroma isn't huge. Maybe the hops are a little bit old. Never dry hop with old hops. But, I mean, it's, it, there's something there. There's something more than there is in this one, but not what you'd expect. But it's a much more pleasant drinking beer for me, for my style. And I'll put this footage on the end, but I had a bit of a hop explosion from a pressure vessel. Um, I've never been able to capture it on camera before. Uh, it's happened once before in nearly exactly the same situation. And once when I was cleaning, I forgot to let the pressure out of the collection jar when I unscrewed it and I got covered with hops, but I was out the front, didn't have the camera on. Um, this time it was for a, a Patreon video. So I was talking through most of it. I wasn't concentrating. I should have just put the hops in and put the lid on. <laughs> but anyway, um, it only seems to happen to me, one, if I'm up near the 15 PSI or higher. That's why I usually stay down around the 10% or even lower if I know I'm going to double dry hop. And two, when I double dry hop. And I think it's that second dry hop that uh, when you open it, it stirs up the other hops that are already in there. So you get nucleation points all sort of happening and then you throw in more hops in and that's when it really foams up. Anyway, it got me this time. So I'll show that footage at the end. 
So back onto what this video is actually about, and that's blending beer. The original first one that I didn't dry hop, I'm gonna blend some of my American stout with it. Anyone that's been to any of my broadcasts on a Friday night know that I'm a cereal beer blender. I've done it forever, I just love it. Um, whether it be a, a bad commercial beer, I'll top up with one of my IPAs. Whether it was my Kolsch that sometimes I felt should be hoppier or I'll put a bit of stout in it, make it like a red ale. Um, I love doing it. So I'm gonna get out of this noisy house and we'll go out to the garage and we'll have a chat. <laughs> Cheers. But I think beer blending is very, very important and a skill that doesn't get talked about very much. Um, let me put this down. There's famous beers that are blended beers. Maybe uh, Newcastle Brown Ale, that's a blended beer. Um, you might not hear of that beer much anymore, but 10 years ago in the homebrew world, people wanted to brew it. It was simply a, a strong aged dark ale mixed with a young amber ale. Um, you, we can even go to the old black and tans, um, where in Australia, in Sydney, we might have had two years old and two years new, um, but a more classic one might be uh, Guinness and a pale ale or Guinness and a lager. Blending is really important. It's not just to cover up a beer. Um, it just can make a beer with much more complexity than you'll get from just a normal one brewed beer. Um, things like, especially things like barrel aged ales, sour ales. Uh, you'll find any um, sort of sour brewery, you know, that, or barrel aged brewery that rely on that sort of stuff will be blending. It's a really important part of the process and it's, you know, it's near on more important than the, the base beer itself. Of course, you've got to, you know, you've got to have some sort of beer to start with, but the blending is really, really important. The blending I did today uh, isn't quite down to the detail. Some people will go down to a pipette or a syringe to blend the beers and get that perfect flavour. Um, you know, they might start with 250 mils of the beer they want as the base and they might add drop by drop of the other beer. They might add 10 mil at a time. They might add a quarter of the cup. You know, you know what I mean? They, they, they blend things in different ways, but the more accurate you are, the better, of course. I don't own a brewery. I'm a home brewer. So, you know, there's not often I go to this sort of detail. I'll just add, if you're adding essences to your beer, um, vanilla extracts, things like that, um, it's a good idea to pour a cup and use these sort of things to add a, the smallest amount. Uh, and then upscale it. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked. But today at home, I'm keeping it much simpler. I'm just grabbing a quick kitchen scale and a couple of glasses, and I'm just gonna pour out the base beer I wanna weigh it, and then I'm gonna weigh whatever stout, as much stout as I need to get the color I want or the taste I want. Taste is more important. Um, and then we'll upscale it to the keg. Uh, let's have a look. First I'll just zero the scales out with the glass on it. We'll add some, you can do this in a separate glass of course. Add some beer, that's probably about a cup, maybe. That's 158 grams. We'll try and round it out a bit, eh? Oops, that was too much. There's 175 grams of my house ale. So this is the stout. We can zero out again if you like, but I'm just gonna remember. 175, put some stout in. Give it a stir, see if that's what I want, where I want it at. Oh, I'd actually like a bit more in that. I'll just take a bit of the foam off. What do we got there? We're at 269 now. We'll say 270. So I've added 95 grams 
to 175. And, oh, I could go a touch more. No, that's pretty good. By the time that gets in a really thick glass, that'll be nice and red. And the most important thing though, which you should be going on, is taste. That's good. That's how I want it. So we'll do our calculations and we'll do get it into the keg. So let's just quickly go through this. We've got 95 grams out of the 270 grams we had. We times that by 100, of course, to get the percentage of stout we'll need to add. So I'll just round that off to 35%. We've got the 8.1 kilo, and we'll divide that by 65, the rest of the percentage left. And we'll times that by 35. And that gives you the 4.3 kilo of stout I need to add to the house ale. Now, of course, you can be more accurate than this, but I'm not being too fussed for this brew. First, I'm weighing an empty keg. It's about nearly four kilo. So I just move the keg of stout out of the way and then pull out the house ale so we can weigh it and see how much beer's in there. And we're at about 12 kilo 100. So if I take four off that, we're about 8.1 kilo. And I need a 35% um, stout to go in. So I've just done the math and we need about 4.3 kilo in there. Uh, 16, 16 and a half kilo should do it. I have a fully purged transfer line just for the CO2. First it was um, a sanitizer and then I purged it with CO2. Yeah. This is the stout. This is the one we're transferring into. Get up to the beer line. I'll just go and get my, to be perfect, you know, I'm gonna to have to add the weight of this one, which we can see on the scales straight away. And don't do what I do. You should really take it off the scales when attaching and detaching fittings. We're at 12.2. This will add a little bit, but I'm not gonna to worry too much. By rights, this should start just transferring over. Make sure I'm on the right uh, Just double check, beer load, beer post. And there we go. I haven't sort of let the pressure out yet. We are going up. But if I start letting the pressure out at the top of the keg, Right here, we should be getting transferred. If I start spurting beer out, I'm going to be in trouble with the wife. So I want to go to about 16.6. You could periodically open up the safety relief valve if you wanted to do it that way. Getting close now. Oh, I'm going to stop it. Right about there, that'll do. What do we got? Clean everything up, of course. This can go back to the back of the fridge. You can give it a little shake up. Probably not really needed. It'll do it by itself. All right, let's get this back in. Let's just clear that tap out first. We'll see if we got close. I was a bit rough and ready about it, but I reckon we shouldn't be too far off. Here we go. I don't know why it looks so dark on the camera there. Let me uh, get some light behind it. There we go.
Looks nice. Cheers. That's definitely better than the house ale by itself. So this is a result, and I realise by looking at my monitor that the colours look a little different from inside to outside, but that's total, I'm in the garage now, it's all shut up. I was inside before with the lights on and the sun coming into the room, so the colours look a bit different on camera. But I can assure you, <laughs> this is that beer. And it's just good. It's just good, it's much better than the, the original house I had. And just with that little bit of that uh, American stout added in, it's changed it totally. It's a really nice brew. I've still got a bit, a bit of the American stout left. I've still got uh, the other keg of the house ale. Plus, nearly a full new keg of a nice red ale. I'm not sure what you call it. It's a blended, a blended red ale. There you go. Anyway, if you haven't tried it, you should. Seriously, any beer you got on tap, whether it be a Kolsch with an IPA or a lager with a pale ale, or most of mine I do it with IPAs, um, and that's adding the IPA. You know, if I get a, a commercial beer I don't like, um, someone drops it off or I buy one, and i just not fussed about it, but I don't want to throw it away. It's a waste to throw it away. Uh, not because I'm throwing, you know, just throwing away alcohol, but <laughs> everything that's gone into making that beer um, if you can make it that you enjoy it, why not blend it? So, you know, I might pour a, a glass of the pale ale or lager that I didn't find very good and I'll add a bit of my IPA, a bit of my pale ale, a bit of a stout. And uh, then it becomes, or can become, very drinkable. I should uh, mention also, 50-50 isn't always a good thing. Uh, we're sort of, well, at least I am, from the old school where it was, uh, you know, 50% stout, 50% lager. That's not always a good thing. Always try before you just mix it. Uh, do that little test, whether, it, as I said, whether it be with a, a syringe or a pipette, um, and you'll get a much better uh, product in the end. Anyway, cheers, hope you learned something. Please blend, try, try, go right now to your fridge, because you, you, you'll love it. Pro I promise you, you'll love it. I mean, you know, it could be that one, uh, even if it's in bottles, you can still do it, you know. It could be that extract beer, or, or it doesn't have to be extract, or something that, you, you know, that you brewed and you, di you just didn't like, but you, it's not terrible and it's not infected. You can't save everything. But, you know, a little bit of blending with something else. Sometimes it has to be a dark ale uh, just to pick the beer up. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Like... <laughs> the world is your oyster. Blend beers, try it. It's not cheating, it's not anything. It's really good. You'll get beers you'll never be able to brew with one brew by blending beers. Uh, they're unique um, and you'll blow people away. Cheers. If you haven't figured out I love red ales by now, you should. Haven't brewed very many this year. But uh, if I can... Mix them up like this, I'm happy. It's winter, I should be brewing my red ales again. Anyway, take care. Like, subscribe, share. Peace to you and good health. <laughs> what I was saying was I'll take, it's sitting at about 14 here, so I'll take the pressure off. I'll see if I can undo it, I'll undo it. It's usually tight from the pressure, so just let a bit of pressure out. Not all of it, because I want that pressure to be able to push up the lid, which it is now. There we go, I can hear it's, the lid's popped. So don't keep unscrewing, because you'll pop the lid up through the roof. But I know that now that's... Oops, it's starting to foam up. Get that out, get that out of the way. Uh-oh. Put those in. Put that on. Oh, <laughs> This happened last time. I, tried, oh, I can't believe I got it on camera. <laughs> oh, I got it. Last time I didn't get it on camera.
Could you? <laughs> oh my God, that's what you get for being complacent. I'm covered in it. <laughs>